Welcome to Derek's World of Motorcycling. I'm Derek. Today I'll be walking you guys around my Kawasaki ZZR 1400. This is a 2009 Kawasaki ZZR 1400, also known as the Ninja ZX14. It's one of a number of hyper sports bikes that were introduced in the late 90s and early noughties, such as the Honda Super Blackbird, Suzuki Hayabusa, etc. These bikes were so powerful that an agreement was reached between the manufacturers to limit their maximum speed to 300 km per hour equivalent to 186 miles per hour. The Generation 1 ZZR, introduced in 2006, had already aroused my interest, but seeing the Gen 2 model in its new green metallic paint scheme had me scrabbling for my flexible friend. I bought mine in April 2009 without even test riding one. A month later, and the Green Goblin was in my garage. After over 14 years of ownership, the bike remains more or less standard, although a few mods have been made to improve its touring capability. I originally used Krieger luggage packs with the bike, but decided instead to install racks for Gibby B35 hard panniers. They offer more convenience and better security than soft luggage. I replaced the original windscreen with an airflow screen which reduced the buffeting and turbulence at high speeds. The original seat was rather hard, so I had it modified to a raised height comfort type with gel pads. It was an improvement, but my bum still becomes numb over long distances. Regular stops are a must. Access to the battery isn't straightforward, so I added a charging lead that runs to the headstock. It also doubles as a power lead. Finally, a rear hugger was added to keep crap off the rear shock. Build quality is excellent and the quality paint finish means that the bike still shines up like new after a wash. Reliability wise, ZZRs are known to be relatively bulletproof. However, in 2021, an issue surfaced where my bike wouldn't start. Many hours were spent trying to trace the problem. In the end, it turned out that the aftermarket alarm immobiliser was faulty. The only other issues have been a worn final drive chain and a non-functioning brake lever switch which was fixed with a couple of squirts of WD-40. I mainly use the bike for touring or for going to race meets. I usually mount at least one pannier so I can swap to comfy tracky bottoms and trainers instead of sweltering in bike gear all day. There's even a hook to lock your helmet to the bike. In 2011, I toured to Munich in Germany, stopping in Belgium and Luxembourg along the way. On the way back, I stopped at Hockenheim to watch some IDM championship racing. The next day I visited the Nürburgring with the intention of doing a lap of the circuit. Fortunately, I managed to blag a ride in a ring regulars car. Definitely the safer option. In 2015, I went to the Isle of Man for the TT. Really enjoyed the event, but I never got to ride the full circuit as the mountain road was always closed for accident recovery. My most recent trip on the ZZR was in 2016 to Northern Ireland for the Northwest 200. The day after my arrival was a free day, which I spent riding to all of the popular sightseeing spots. The bike might look like a big green barge, but it handles surprisingly well. I was curious to see how it would fare on track, so in 2015 I booked a couple of track day sessions at Rockingham. I had a blast and proved to myself that it is possible to get your knee down on the ZZR. The bike is massively powerful but delivers it with turbine-like smoothness. Overtakes are only a throttle twitch away. Other pluses include good build quality, big stable mirrors and inexpensive insurance, although being an old git also helps with the latter. On the downside, your driving license is always under threat without constant monitoring of the speedo. It really could do with cruise control. The front forks are soft and bottom out easily unless preload is increased. The green colour attracts flies, so on a wash day the bike slowly turns into a watery tomb. In conclusion, the ZZR1400 is an awesome bike, 
and it's probably the best all-round bike that I've owned. Its production run ended in 2020. Maybe it's destined to become a future classic. Just another in the long list of reasons to hang on to it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.